What's up, world lit folks? Hope you're doing okay. Ah, third week. Wow. Uh, I don't know about you, but this whole process is is moving pretty slow for me. Um, but yeah, I hope you're. I'm an optimist, so I always try to find the bright side of things, and I hope you're finding bright sides too, and hope you're finding ways to stay hopeful and active and healthy. Um, I'm not, I'm not going to do as long of a video as I did last time. I'm just going to do kind of some rapid fire reminders and things to uh, just kind of summarizing our week to be aware of. Um, I think first thing I want to say is I'm hoping that you watch this whole video. Um, you know, the, the last one, I, I got to be honest, I, I spent a lot of time on and on uh, YouTube, I can see the uh, like average amount of time spent watching the video and um, it uh, made me a little bit sad. I don't want to try to do something to like force you guys to watch it or find like use a program that keeps track of your watching times. But, uh, you know, I just hope that you'll be respectful of my time and effort and actually watch these things because, um, you know, they're, they're designed to make up for a little bit of the lost connection and um, dialogue that we get to have in class. So uh, on that subject, I wanted to tell you guys, so now that we are in week three, according to our, like the plans for the high school, we're, we're kind of entering a new phase. And in this phase, like we're encouraged to do like, to try to do like some live things and then also to have some like office hours available for students to like call in or, or talk. Um, as I thought about that for my class, uh, honestly, I, I kind of think for, for things concerning world lit, activities, readings, discussions, like I feel really comfortable uh, just keeping things similar to how they have been using Google Classroom, using, I'll, I'm going to continue to use Flipgrid, and I hope that was okay. I kind of like that, um, you know, chance to see your faces a bit and to, to have you actually speak things in discussion. Um, but I don't know, I, I just feel like the prospect of trying to do something like to, to like discuss the book with like a whole bunch of people signed into the same video, um, I that just doesn't seem super worthwhile. Uh, and a big part of that too, honestly, is like if I get the chance to talk to you live, like I'm not going to want to talk about world lit stuff. Like I'm, I'm way more interested in just like, seeing how you're doing personally. So um, I am going to have, I think this week, a time for like people in my world literature classes to join like a live, um, a, like a live session. But I think, honestly, my approach is just going to be like checking in with you personally. Um, it's not going to be anything super important for class. Um, I, you know, I just miss you, and and I, that's going to be that's going to be my my approach. Just thinking about what it honestly would look like. Uh, so if you want to say hey in a live sort of way, I hope you'll uh, join that live session and say hey and and. I'd love to check in with you more so in person. Um, and, and, you know, feel free at, at any time you can join that. If you have more specific questions about class, if you want to talk about capstone, um, yeah, you can join that or send me an email as always. Uh, okay, looking to this week, um, I, I told you last week that I was going to assign the TED Talk project, which still is going to be uh, your final project. I, I Luckily, I think the project works well. It's like even in, in the past when I've done this project, normally I have students like make recorded videos of their TED Talks. So I feel like I could just keep it pretty much the same. Um, and actually, uh, this week I'm assigning it and I'm, I'm kind of making you do some initial brainstorming uh, on like what uh, possible topic might be and I'm gonna use Flipgrid for that so I, I explain this in more detail on Google Classroom but basically I'm gonna have you one submit a video with like one or two broad topic ideas just some like initial brainstorming 
And then to simulate some discussion, I'm also going to have you record another video later in the week, uh, responding and like giving giving some brief feedback and, and comments on one or more of your classmates' ideas too. So yeah, again, it's kind of meant to sim simulate kind of like a classroom discussion on these, but that I try to, I, I like this assignment. I try to make the TED Talk assignment very open uh, and very uh, encouraging to you to do something that is either personal to you or something that you're passionate about, uh, you know, like similar assignments that I've done in the past, like it, there, there should be no reason that you don't get excited about them because it's so open-ended. There's so many different possibilities you can, you can talk about from social issues to um, world global issues to personal issues to, you know, if you're more of a, if, if you're more interested in religion, talk about that. If you're more interested in psychology, talk about that. If you're more interested in like family or friends or there's just a million different things you can think about. Uh, yeah, I, there's no reason for you not to get excited and passionate about what you're doing, I think. Um, beyond that, we are finishing book one in Cry the Beloved Country. Uh, that this kind of, we, we, you'll see once we get to part two, there's, there's definitely a big shift. There's actually a big shift in point of view, but we kind of get the story of Stephen Kumalo and, and Absalom and what's gone, you know. The, the first book kind of reads, kind it's kind of like a mystery story, right? Like, what happened? Like, what exactly happened? You know, the, this this older father is sort of called from his comfortable life in the country and, and you know, goes down into Johannesburg and, um, you know, following this, this uh, first chapter that kind of forecasts, like, oh, things are broken, things are messed up, things things aren't what they seem. So book one kind of ends with Stephen and Absalom and us really understanding like, oh, okay, like this is the thing that happens. Um, we will go through book two pretty quickly. I think we'll only read book two next week. But the couple of things I'm gonna, I'm gonna have you do for the book this week is you will have a blog to do. And then also, uh, if you remember to my first video, I explained that uh, with our theme of uh, a holistic look at our damaged world, I, I kind of tend to break that up into two parts. So things that are externally damaged, um, you know, the systems, the politics, the, the social issues, stuff like that. And also things like some internal brokenness. Uh, I think especially toward, you know, the second half of book one, we get lots of cool insights into like the ways that that Stephen, that this like this father who who is is mourning things with his son, there's there's like lots of ways that you could say that he is like psychological psychologically or spiritually hurting or broken or in pain. And so you looked at external damage last week, and this uh, week I want you to look at internal damage to really do some thinking about what are the sorts of spiritual and psychological issues that Patton is exploring through this character. Uh, and oh man, I wish we had more time in class because there's so many interesting things to think about and discuss. Ugh, I'm just mourning losing that. But I hope you'll take it seriously. I, I hope that you're enjoying the book. I hope that you're remembering what I said in the first video about this book kind of mimicking the structure and the patterns of the Bible going from uh, fall and brokenness into into healing and redemption. Uh, keep that in the back of your of your mind always, and yeah, keep taking this book seriously, as serious as as you can. So, thanks, guys. Love you. Miss you. All right.